What's up, everyone? Blake Sloan here uh, with Alex Prout, and uh, we're doing an episode for the Motor Beach Real Estate Career kind of blog. We talk about all these problems that uh, we see in industry. We talk about in the office a lot. I get a lot of questions emailed in. Um, you stuff the radio stuff we talk about uh, in regards to agent success in business, also uh, agent success in life. And Alex, one of our you know top agents here, who's uh, seen a lot of massive growth, and even what in the past week. Uh, put three in contract, uh, under contract in one day, mm -hmm. already closed two this week. Um, and, and so it was getting massive results, not just business, but also life, right? Yeah. And so that's one thing I wanted to have him on. We kind of just talk about um, a few things in, in business today, right? When we kind of talk about uh, and just kind of play it by as we go. First is why are we still seeing agents uh, fail so much in the business, right? We see it happen all the time. I see interacting with them and it's small stuff in regards to understanding how to get deals done. Uh, to understanding how to get more clients, more under, you know, to actually sign with you as a client. Yep. And uh, we'll talk about kind of what you're seeing. Talk about being empowered personally and uh, how being empowered personally has really helped you, how we see that help everybody um, here within our team, right? And the big thing we want to talk about is the industry changing. Yeah. And we've talked about that a lot. I just came back from a very high, high level mastermind uh, with agents across the country. And they're seeing a lot of massive shifts and changes in regards to going to a true, like, ultimate sellers market with no inventory, multiple offers on every single property. We have to have true differentiation to, one, help your client get the property, uh, to, to obtain listings, help your client the right way, and uh, you cannot survive as an overtaker anymore, uh, or you'll, you'll starve, right? One thing you're also seeing is these big, huge companies like iBuyer type company, which is Open Door. Zillow just talked about it. Um, you know, they're basically going to create massive market share. A friend of mine in Phoenix uh, saw Open Door come in and get 30% market share uh, in about a year, which is unfathomable. So take 30% of your food off the table, same amount of realtors, you see a big problem there, right? And so that's ultimately uh, kind of what we're seeing. But what, what do you see right now, you know, from your standpoint in regards to the state of, of the industry here, state of what we're seeing? Uh, with other realtors, some of the frustrations you see out there? Uh, just given the limited inventory in our market, uh, sellers absolutely know that they're they're pretty much controlling the prices right now. The buyers also know that there's emergency when it comes to going in on these properties. And uh, it really takes knowing what the variables are, where your leverage points are. And if you just go in swinging blindly, you're going to lose every time. And you see that happening with a lot of agents, right? Mm -hmm. So we all know that the numbers in our MLS is average agent sell 3.57 homes per year. Yeah. That's real 3.57 homes per year. And so there's a lot of you all, you know, and that's why I do this. We share videos out here uh, because a lot of people need help. I mentioned this before in some of our previous videos. Uh, there's an obligation I feel to help people because of what we had. And kind of your story, tell a little bit about your story before. Anybody hasn't seen that, but, you know, you're in business for a year at a big box place. Mm -hmm. You had a bunch of money saved up, right? And you were told to, to do what? To send some postcards. Send some postcards. You send postcards <laughs> uh, to get listings. And how many listings did you get? Zero. Zero, right? And so you blew through cash that you had mm. from a business standpoint, also blew through cash to survive and didn't get anything. Right. There's somebody like yourself out there right now who's in the same situation. But they'll get a video after video from me or us and not even respond. Right. You know, it's crazy <laughs> to me. And, and so part of why I want to have Alex on here to talk is, you know, from your perspective, and a lot of times people will see these things, they're crying for help, their family's getting destroyed, their marriage is in trouble, they're on the rocks, so they're struggling, they're stressed out. But they don't take the action a lot of times to reach out to somebody for a different opportunity. They make the same mistake that the consumer makes, which is thinking that all real estate agents or real estate companies are the same, right? Mm -hmm. And so what have you found differently since kind of coming to our team, ultimately, in regards to how business is done, the trainings and things like that? Well, the first thing that I think anyone who's struggling with a business out there needs to realize, and especially if they're sitting in, in a quote-unquote older model, is that... They are very likely good at real estate, and they just don't know the path to walk. Right. So when it comes to uh, guidance, all the steps being in the right place, learning the right things in the right order, not fussing over the stuff that's down the road until it's time to get there and learn it. You know that that's a huge thing is is actually knowing what the next step is to take. Not only for you, but for the way that you can convey that co uh, confidence to a client because they need to know it too. They're scared of the process, and a lot of times agents who are trying to drink from a fire hose, they're scared of the process too. And if you're afraid of the process, your clients. To be afraid of the process this is how deals blow up and they're just mirroring your energy right mm -hmm. as an agent to them and so mm -hmm. what you find is we told us in that previous one i did a while back and so the biggest reasons that agents you know fail right is number one lack of leads mm -hmm. lack of quality leads that come through like i've interviewed people here recently that they get like one lead a week two leads a week you can't survive off that if you guys do the math average web lead for the average company is one to two percent mm -hmm. so if you get one lead a week right i mean you're basically looking at one deal every other year mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of the statistic. And yeah. so that's a problem. Now, a lot of people get more leads than that. It depends on the source and the type. But mm -hmm. the number two problem you run into is they don't have a way to convert 
from lead to client. Right, exactly. And so when every single person I ask them, you know, what do you say? Literally almost every single person says they just wing it, right? I just wing it. That's probably what you did before, right? Easily. Got a lead, you just call them wing it. And here's where everybody screws up, and I'll kind of give a secret away. Everybody gets on the phone when you ask about, are you looking to make a move? Do you have an agent? Are you pre-qualified? Guess what the buyer does not want? An agent. An agent or you get pre-qualified with some agent who they don't know and they don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. And so they're saying, F you, and they're getting on the phone and going to somebody else who understands sales and psychology mm -hmm. and seduction. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the process. You have to offer buyers what they want because that's what they want in today's time, right? They can do with some agent who wants to ask them about getting pre-qualified on the first conversation. Or they can go on Zillow and look at things and get all the data they want who probably has more information than that agent even knows. Because what I found is a lot of the old school agents who are selling 3.5 cent homes a year aren't studying the market. Mm -hmm. They don't know what's going on in the market. The consumer knows more than they do, which is a problem. And so that's the thing that you have to be aware of in today's marketplace is that the consumer's smart. They need an expert who needs somebody like you or us who can help them make use of that data and make good decisions on that, right. a.k.a. advise them. But the problem is if you don't have any value propositions to have them meet with you or be able to work with you, guess what? You're screwed, right? Yeah, dead in the water. And the last <laughs> part you see they run into, well, the last two, is that they don't have a way, a clear value proposition to get them to use them as a client, a.k.a. a buyer agency agreement or, for example, a listing agreement as, a, as an agent, mm -hmm. right? And so that's what you run into. I always ask them, hey, if I should use, why should I use you versus anyone else? No one has ever had a clear reason of why. I'm the best. I've been here old, you know, for 20 years. Whatever it is, nothing the consumer cares about and nothing that's tangible. And so we have what? Step-by-step -step presentations right. that articulate value so they, one, understand what we do, see the value of what we do, and then obviously they're going to what? Listen to value our advice. So when you are in a multiple offer situation, they know that you know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and they're going to actually listen to your advice, not make an offer $20,000 below asking price, right? Yeah. And so that was the last thing I see why agents fail is that what happens is they come in, and you may feel the same exact thing I've been talking about. If it is, you've got a problem. You need to reach out, right? Ultimately, in that regard, the last part is they don't have a way or the ability to advise their client from the truth, mm -hmm. right? They're telling their client what they want to hear and not what they need to hear. Right. And we focus on telling our client that. We tell them the first meeting, hey, look, we're going to tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. And it may be tough conversations because our job is to get them the property. Absolutely. So most everybody out there wants the old way everyone does everything. And I know because I was guilty of this in the beginning. Like, oh, I'm going to get you the best deal. I'm going to save you the most money. I'm going to save you the most money on the asking price. I'm going to save you the most money on the, the home inspections. And so what you have then is what we call a world saver, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not only value proposition, I'm going to save a lot of money. Well, I'm going to ask you this. And have you consider what if saving them the most amount of money on that property is not the best option for them? Mm -hmm. Something to think about, right? If you're two offers on the table, it's the house they wanted. They've already looked at 15 houses. This is their dream house, right? It's listed at 250000 Is it best to advise them to offer two twenty? No, you know why? Because they're not going to get the property and they're going to be pissed off. At who? At you, right? Sometimes even us. Like, we've been a listing agent. We'll get people that call our office upset, mad they did not get the property, thinking that we did something wrong. And I say, hey, look, what property was it? 123 Main Street. Okay, well, what happened? Well, we made an offer and it got rejected. Went somebody else. Something's not done right over there. Well, let me look at the numbers. Well, you offered $20,000 below asking price with two other offers on the table. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Well, you know what they always say is, well, I would have paid more if my agent would have told me. The problem is the agent doesn't have the ability or obviously the, the authority with their client to advise them from a place of reality. Mm -hmm. They're allowing the client to live what we call fantasy and they're not bringing them to fact. Right. And so what's been your experience in that as we kind of teach on that, understand the psychology of what happens? Because here's the problem. Most people don't understand the psychology of sales and real estate. They're just trying to survive, mm -hmm. which is why you see 3.57 homes a year, the average. What's been your experience with that? With what we teach versus what you saw, you know, in a different big box store. Well, the part of the issue is that you need to earn the permission from the client and, and the respect to be able to advise them in that way. You know, obviously everyone would love to come in on a property twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars less and win, uh, but that's just not the reality of the market. But the best thing that you can do for your client, and, and not even from a sales perspective, but just from what it is our job as advisors is to remember they want a home. They're here because they want to buy a home. That's the end result, and anything in between it has to be geared toward going to that end result. And if it's their dream home and you're just saying yes and saying, hey, twenty, thirty thousand dollars under, just because you want to be the nice guy, it, you know, it's not about bullying anyone, it's about saying, listen, this is your dream home. My job is to get you into that home. Here's what's realistically going to get you there. Yeah, and that's what I was getting at is that it's not that everybody wants to already. It's about having the ability to tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. The agent knows deep down, like, hey, look, you're probably not going to get the property, but they don't have any other value to offer. Right. We're going to lose them as a client because that's the only value. So 
what you have to have is stacking value on top of each other back to back to back so that now there's all these things that we do as an advisor, as an expert to help them. We do more than just write the offer up, Absolutely. right? We help them do a million different things in the process, but the, ha the key there is having the ability to tell them the truth in that process, right? And so because, like you talked about, the best thing is to get our, our client what they want. The value what we do is we have the ability to have deep conversation with our client like a true advisor would do and find out what's most important. Is it most important? Now, I hear everybody say, hey, we do that too, but do you do that in a way where you sign into an agreement, you have a whole value proposition, you know, presentation where they understand it so you can truly tell them that. Right. It's one thing to say, well, we have that conversation, too, to actually tell them the truth when it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. What I find is anytime we have someone who's upset from another side, from a client standpoint or buyer, they have no clue what's really going on, right? They send a home inspection over, and they ask for every single thing on the home inspection to be fixed on a house that's 25 years old. Right. They think they're going to get that, right? It'd be nice to get that, but what's the chance of them getting that? Zero. Not a whole lot, right? <laughs> this happened yesterday. And one of our listing agents is like, man, what is going on? I'm like, look. The agent probably knows that a little bit or does not have the understanding to be able to help advise the client. Say, look, here's the deal. This home inspection, this is what we're going to probably ask for. This is probably best. This is not a big deal. I'm going to do what I can for you, but how close? And these people, that deal blew up over a very, very small amount of things because the buyer didn't really understand on the, what was going on. Right. And so what have you learned in this process about advising your client and doing that, right? You're much more so of a, of a, a process in regards to helping them understand what's going on in a deep level, mm -hmm. right? Well, c communication, constant communication is so important. And it's even if it's just a mundane bit of communication, you know, there's always on the back end about a week span or so where there may not be a whole lot to say because everything's just going sailing right into the close. But going back over all the variables, going over all the things you covered, and actually you know, showing, putting your money where your mouth is on the things that you've actually done to actually make this work for them. It's really important. It's important. And they want to know it. They want to know that you've gone out because they're the ones who took the uh, leap of faith on you in the first place. Right. So it, it's it's important to be able to advise, but also disclose absolutely everything you're doing to help them in this part of the process. Yeah. And just and like I said, be real helpful to understand what's because they want that. And like mm -hmm. I said, anytime we've seen these situations where a buyer from somebody else, a different agent, you know, calls like, hey, what's going on? We explain Here's what's going on. The seller has this house. They're probably not going to fix every little thing. Like, oh man, you know, well, we would have known that in the beginning, it would have been different. Mm -hmm. And so part of that is having that ability to help guide the client the right way. Mm -hmm. But it all starts in the beginning at differentiation, right? Do you have a clear value proposition? Do you have a clear understanding of where you want to take the client to to help them? Because here's the deal. We all hate to be sold, but we like to be seduced. All of us, myself, right? You, everybody mm -hmm. watching even now. So our goal is to help, you know, seduce in the process. Guess what? Give buyers what they want, which is to look at houses, advise them, you know, let them look and feel what they want to basically to, to enjoy the process and the experience. And then on top of that, you know, advise them from the rest of that, that process as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the key part in that. What are the kind of mistakes or things that you see that, that cause people to fail in today's market, especially now? The One of the bigger failure points that happens with a lot of agents is just not going in heavy from the beginning and understanding that you need to tell everyone step by step what's about to happen because if you fail to do that from meeting one from the time that it's time to let's say sign a buyer's agreement and show properties and you don't talk about what your next steps are what you're going to be doing for them they're not listening to you they're wondering what's coming up next so right. pre-frame the entire process and and just disclose it all in the upfront that's the biggest point of failure right there and that's part of the, the frustration that folks have with their agents when they do decide to jump ship is you know they didn't tell us what was, what was going to happen next they didn't uh, get back to us when we needed them to. They didn't get us the properties we wanted. They were showing us stuff they wanted. And it's it, it's a common failure point is not listening to them and then also not explaining to them, here's how what you need is going to fit into how this process works. Right. And that's one thing that I've, I've found, you know, except for a few small uh, companies out there, what I find is most agents out there feel alone. They're just swimming in this abyss, right? Trying to survive. You may be feeling this way right now, is that you're just trying to survive and you feel alone and you're not sure what to do and you're stressed out and you're not sure where to that next deal is going to come from, where that next lead is going to come from. And so what happens is you find that these people are struggling and there's so few lack of leads and opportunities, you're constantly trying to fit, fit a square peg into a round hole. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to shoot, you know, free the three pointers all the time. And you're trying to throw Hail Marys all the time. And it becomes what? Very, very stressful, mm -hmm. right? And you feel alone. You feel this feeling of drowning mm -hmm. and not having any air or oxygen. And so you're constantly just doing it. And they'll sit there and watch this video and the last six videos and not take any action because they think that, you know, things are already different. And this is kind of what I wanted to do, too, is kind of dispel 
the myth of, of what people think. I think a lot of times people see the videos, they think like, holy crap, this is not possible or, or true. It's not believable. Mm -hmm. And I've interviewed a few people who reached out thought like, man, I just didn't believe that the things you guys are showing, you show a dude that shows sells 71 homes his first year, you know, a dude coming in three and one day this week, close to this week, like, this stuff is real. Mm -hmm. And I'm not on this video just to, to, to try to make some shit up and just tell things, like, this is real stuff. And I do this, like Alex mentioned earlier, there's an obligation out there to the people who can make it, mm -hmm. who just don't have the right path. And I think that's kind of the key of why I want to do this, but, you know, what do you feel and what's your experience been for somebody out there who may be super doubtful or, or not really sure kind of uh, what's what, what what this is all about? Like, what's your experience like with lead flow? Do you get too many leads that I love? I mean, honestly, in that I way. have too many leads. I have too many leads. I'll, I'll, it, there's really no other way to say it. I have it's too many. It's a massive <laughs> overflow of leads in that Absolutely. regard. And we know that where all the money's made, we're in the follow up. Absolutely. And we only have proven systems. We have also inside sales who helps mm -hmm. book appointments for for everybody you know here as well. And so the, we're drowning in opportunities, mm -hmm. right? It's just a matter of doing what, stepping in. And follow up. And part of the, the biggest challenge is doing what is keeping the right things in the right order. Absolutely. And and for you, a lot of times, as you said, it's getting overwhelmed. Uh huh. And so that's kind of the key here. And so what we teach on, I mean, I don't want to get too deep into it, but we have some pretty deep trainings, yes. right? Like every week we have deep trainings. We don't just talk about like, hey, what's the market doing? No. We're talking about very very deep high level things, understanding psychology, mm -hmm. the psychology of yourself, the psychology of our clients, the psychology of how we operate, and to get to the part, which I wanted to get to really quick, is the, the being in power personally, mm -hmm. right? We have ways that we live that allow us to live in power, and Absolutely. you've made some massive changes. For Tell everybody out there, you know, kind of what, what experience you've had in regards to your power. You know, I can see it. I can mm -hmm. feel it in your energy, how you come every day, you know, pumped up, and, and some changes you made personally. Tell everybody kind of about that as well. Well, I, there's been a lot of changes I've made in my life. Um, you know, I've gone from being in this industry to out of this industry to back into it. That was one of the first decisions I made. But upon coming back, it was a decision to be all in with everything. And I honestly, I, I said it out loud to myself, I'm going to be all in when I come back. I had no idea all the things that were in place that, that you know, from, from even a personal standpoint, you know, my health, my education, the way I feel about things, the way I perceive uh, not just business, but even the people that walk around me now, it all comes from this sourced place where we're developing this every single week. Right. It's kind of hard to quantify it, honestly. Um, you know, and it's, you know, I came out of a great career where I was running multiple restaurants. I came out of a marriage. Um, and it, it was a time in my life where I decided I'm 30 years old. I'm going to take every bit of power back to do the things that I know I was meant to do. Right. And that's what I'm executing on as we speak. And you came here after those, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it jumped massively mm -hmm. into a place of power. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what our goal does and what we do here. Mm -hmm. Um, with that, it is to get in a place of power, mm -hmm. and we focus on that every single week, and we track that. We set goals. I mean, um, you got some pretty cool goals that come up, yeah. And, and so we're, we're talking about that, but we focus on all four areas of life, right? How we operate in our body, mm -hmm. and it's one of the things that you know we lead that way. You made a big decision without anybody, kind of on your own, like, yeah. hey, look, I'm gonna quit drinking, right? Yeah. And that yeah. way, he's like, hey, I, I've been doing that, and you feel like a new person in that regard, and that's just something. So what you can be the best you can be, mm -hmm. and that's not something that. When you, when you must push up, that's just no. what you saw in your voice inside told you. That's right. Uh, and that's so. Uh, this next thing, spirituality. You know, how do we come across and feel mm -hmm. from a spiritual aspect? And, and the other part is is our relationships, right? Mm -hmm. How do we feel our relationships with our family, those around us? Uh, because as they're on fire, mm -hmm. right, your business is going to be on fire too. And, and so, from a business standpoint, having clear, tangible targets is what leads people forward in that realm, right? Mm -hmm. You have something clear to hunt, something that you can see. I guarantee you, ninety nine percent of people out there watching this. Don't have specific clear targets out Easily. there. What do you want today? What's your exact goal today? How do you measure that goal today? How do you measure that goal this week? Mm -hmm. How do you measure that goal into basically the 30-day target, 60-day target, and your 90-day target, mm -hmm. right? Most people say, oh, I'm set annual goals. They get to the annual goal. What happens? They may or may not hit it very, very close. Well, I kind of hit it, but I didn't really hit it. Mm -hmm. But I blew my marriage up, just hit my, my, my real estate goal, right? We know because I did it. I was that guy. I sacrificed a lot. Sacrificed my relationships before. I sacrificed my body. Um, there's a plan that's 15, 20 pounds, um, you know, heavier. I was in the airport uh, last Friday coming back from the mastermind. A guy who owns a gym was on the flight list. He's like, man, you know, I've seen stuff on Facebook. He's like, um, man, you were you were a lot heavier there a while back. I'm like, yeah, you know, a few years ago I was. I made a big sacrifice trying to mm -hmm. build a business. I sacrificed my, my health, a lot of those parts, which many of you all do. You know why? Because I did it because I saw other people doing it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't worth it. And I'll have you consider right now that it may not be worth it the way you're doing it now. And there's a better way in that regard, right? Absolutely. In regards to how those things come across and 
we set goals so you can be a four-dimensional man, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to just have a lot of money or have money. I want to be a four-dimensional and be an awesome man and awesome husband and father or whatever it may be, um, or mother, obviously, and, and, and wife, and it allows us to make sure that and have a relationship with my God and also my purpose. And as those four things come together, now you have a level of fire mm -hmm. that's untouchable before. And also you have one thing that most people miss, which is fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And so you all know if you can chase transactions for a while, it's okay when you don't have any money. But once you get some money, then guess what? Now you're like feeling empty. And so I know that because I've been there. And so the ability to have that fulfillment coming back is something that you know makes a big, big deal as well. And so uh, that's what we see now. That's what we're big on. And so anybody out there that may be thinking about that or not experiencing this type of thing, you know, I encourage you to reach out, right? Reach out to us and say, here's what's going on. And most of it, like, I don't, you don't got to come work for us. One of it's just I want to be able to help serve and see what how can we help you in that regard right mm -hmm. maybe it's be a conversation like a mastermind like hey look here's what's going on here's what this business we can work together um in in business better because here's the thing that's why you all they don't like me they don't even know me i hear that a lot too i mean so <laughs> i hear stories about me that i've never even heard before that are even close to being true and so that's why i want to reach out and say how do we share what's going on how do we share what i spent hundreds of hundreds hundred thousand dollars learning these things mm -hmm. a lot of pain over the years and how do we kind of share and have that that culture that mentorship there and so bottom line is we got it pretty figured out right in, in that regard a plethora of absolute huge plethora of leads too many leads at this point a proven system that's convert them from a lead to appointment appointment to face-to-face -to -face appointment mm -hmm. right and then appointment to client and the clients actually close yes because there's so many points like he mentioned earlier down the path that you can mess up and lose a client and not even know it and not to mention the back end, which is where the holy grail is, which is the referrals, right? Mm -hmm. the average client you have would be worth 24 times the value. So let's say average sale price 200000 that's $6,000 a commission. That client should be worth about $160,000 on the back end, if you do it right. But that's the thing that everybody misses that they don't understand because they're so busy chasing the next transaction. And so we have the systems built in the back end to help do that in that regard. And so that's just something kind of shared too. Last thing, we'll kind of come into the next one. Is we really see the industry changing. I mean, we've talked about this in, in, in big detail. We always, the reason I'm in these mastermind groups with top agents across the country, which I pay a lot of money to be in, I find that we can gauge what's going on here by about six to eight months. So we're six to eight months behind what happens in California, parts of Arizona, parts of Florida. It allows me to adjust ahead of time to kind of get a, a competitive advantage. What I found is obviously there are much more seller markets than we are. So right now, I think we're about 5.4 months of inventory on the market for single family homes. They're in place about four months, sometimes 3.8 months. And so it's very, very, very crazy, right? They're getting three and four or five, sometimes 10 offers on a property. You got to know what you're doing. And you're seeing agents who are starving who have been in the business for years and survived okay. Mm -hmm. But you don't have the, the hardcore sales ability, hardcore psychology to understand how to get and navigate through that the right way. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how we help give our clients. And we're already positioning for that now. What I'm having you consider also is the middle is going to be gone. You're going to see a lot of times the people who are just kind of getting by with the five, six, seven houses a year are not going to be there long term. Another thing that's a big concern right now is these big you know, house buyers out there that are big companies, a.k.a. open door, eye buyer type companies. Like we mentioned, you've probably seen Zillow announce uh, that they're entering to the house buying uh, mm -hmm. world too, and they're crushing it. Like I mentioned, they actually in Phoenix – uh, gobbled up 30% market share in a year, 30%. So you imagine somebody coming to play like that 30% instantly, mm -hmm. and uh, it's working. They're buying houses at full price, right? There's some fees and stuff in there, and they'll go back and resell them, and they're cutting pretty much a lot of the agents out. Mm -hmm. And so the time to prepare for that is when? Now. 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 Right now. And so that's what we're working on here, that next level thing, not just selling some houses. And so these are things that we want to talk about as a group. Mm -hmm. That we have to match them on here and say, how do we set ourselves apart? How do we do that? We're looking for eight players, you know, who do that. And we play the game at, at, a, at a high level. If you just want to be okay selling 3.57 homes again, you know, we're probably not a fit. But if you're in a place right now of pain and you've been watching this and have not reached out yet, and you say, you know what, I think I'm meant for something more than where I'm at right now, reach out. I mean, would you agree? With what, and this is not just Blake trying to sell, but this is something from a, from a heart here. What would you say to somebody who's skeptical as anything? They've heard their friend who sells three houses a year talk, you know, crap about what Blake or some other group does or whatever in this. I mean, and they have not reached out yet. What would you say to somebody like that? I've been on your side of it. Both oh, you did. That's right. And, <laughs> and out of the industry. They were talking about in, in their meetings. Yeah, in our meetings. Every Tuesday there was something about that. But that, but that's neither here nor there. It's right. not, I've been on the side of it where things were the old ways. When it was, hey, you got your license. You hold the keys to contracts, and that's all you need to know. Well, that's not all you need to know. 
especially with the way that the industry is shifting. But but beyond any of that, if you're feeling that lack of fulfillment, know that, you know, I mean, heck, reach out to me directly if that's the case. I'll tell you the truth like it is. I'll tell you what my experience was before, what my experience is now, and uh, where we're going, you know, from that point and how to get out of the hole that you're in. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable thinking about myself four years ago as it is to right now. And I'm sure you can see it on my face. I can see it's, you know, the, the power and the energy and the positivity mm -hmm. that you have now and who you are and the man mm -hmm. that you become. And that's one thing that you, know, you have to ask yourself is who, who do I got to become, right? Mm -hmm. And who have you become in that process? And so I'm super proud of where you are. Like I said, that's why I want to have you on the, the, the podcast here to say, hey, here's what's going on. And here's this dude. This is powerful, <laughs> right? And it's super cool to see that. It gives me fulfillment. It's what gets me up. It gets me excited to see people grow, mm -hmm. to crush it, to be ringing the bell like we're doing <laughs> um, in that regard and have that because that's what makes the fight worth it. But on the other side, I've seen way too many relationship sacrifice, way too many marriages fail, way too many relationships with their children not being existent because of this business. And so that's somebody, if that's like you out there, it's time to make a change. It's time to at least take some action to reach out because it burns me up when I watch the numbers and I see the same people who watch the videos who have a massive amount of potential and talent but are still staying stuck at three, four, five houses a year. And so you have a deeper potential that God made you for that you haven't taken that action on yet. And so if this is something that really resonates with you or have, take time right now, reach out. There's no more time. The time of being alone is over. We're making big moves right now. Mm -hmm. As this market's coming along, it's time to either get on board or make some moves somewhere because you're going to see something. If you don't change, the industry is going to change you for you. And it's going to probably be to a different industry. Yes. And so <laughs> the old school way of doing things is not going to be existent here soon. You can still survive a little bit now, but you're watching it slowly tick away and disappear in that regard. So uh, finish up with that. Any last thoughts or anything that you know that you have at all? I mean, this I think it all speaks for itself. Honestly, I've, I've come, you know, full 180 since I got back, and I do appreciate being back. Yeah, man. It, it, just to have a week like this week is, is what it's all about. I mean, it messaged me at night to do the third one contract today. You know what I mean? Which is yeah, which is huge. So that's one of the things that we, we want people who who like you mentioned, he nailed it. The entire part of this, there's people out there like you right now who have a huge potential that God made you to be something bigger than you are right now. You have been a path where you can succeed if you can get onto the right path with the right guidance. Mm -hmm. But right now you're trying to drive across the United States without a map and it's not going to happen anytime soon. And so we're going to be your GPS to guide you, to teach you, to help you because we've done it. And so uh, any questions you have, feel free to reach out, email wise, you know, share with somebody who you think may need it. Um, they're going to give us feedback, you know, a lot of times in, in what you're thinking in that regard, um, ultimately, or reach out, you always go to joinblakesloan.com and see a, uh, an awesome kind of basically a, a case study of people, what they've done, what's happening. But the fact is you can't ignore the facts and results anymore, mm -hmm. right? People selling 70 plus homes their first year in real estate, people crushing it right now with you. We just shot a video last week, girl sold $3 million um, in her first quarter of this year, mm -hmm. right? And started real estate in August, September last yeah. year. And so uh, <laughs> this stuff is real, okay? And so the facts do not deny it, right? But a lot of times things here say may at least reach out and get a conversation opinion on. So hope this helps. I uh, wish you some more of these. Um, love you guys, and we'll see you in the next uh, episode.